Hey, it's time for voiceover body shop tech talk number one oh two two two. Okay, I'll do the one you and the zero, and you do the two. All right, V for victory. <laughs> uh, yeah, one oh two. And uh, so tonight we've got uh, we're talking about some acoustical stuff, and we've got an interview. Yep, Animal Studio in Seattle. Yeah, and we're going to talk about software. And again, if you've got a question about your home voiceover studio. Anything at all, acoustics, equipment, any of those things, throw it in the chat room right now. And we'll get to it in the next segment. So stay tuned. It's time for voiceover body shop tech talk right now. Voiceover body shop tech talk is brought to you by VoiceOverEssentials.com, the home of Harlan Hogan's signature products. Source Elements, the folks who bring you Source Connect. VOHeroes.com, become a hero to your clients with award-winning voiceover training. VoiceActor.com, your voiceover website ready in minutes. VoiceOver Extra, your daily resource for voiceover success. And by World Voices, the industry association of freelance voice talent. And now, here's your hosts, Dan and George. Well, hello there. I'm Dan Leonard. And I'm George Whittem. Are you sure? And this is VoiceOver. Body Shop. <laughs> or VO. B S. Tech Talk. Tech Talk. Tech Talk. Tech Talk. Tech Talk. Where's that button? I don't know. It's... Nope, that's not it. <laughs> no, that's not it either. Time to put Tech Talk back on the mixer. Okay. Tech Talk. Tech Talk. Okay. Yeah, that works. <laughs> All right. Anyway, uh, we're here to talk about your home voiceover studio technology uh, because, boy, you and I get questions all week. The phone keeps ringing. The email um, inbox continues to flow with questions about all sorts of stuff. And we have to have the answers for everything, which we right? have to try our best because we've seen it all almost. It's always cool when there's something new. It's like, hmm, I wonder what that's going on here. But amazingly, when you've done this for a long time, the way George and I have been doing it, generally the, the things that go wrong have a pattern. They have a, a history. They, they, we know where things probably go wrong. And generally it's like, wait a second, I know what's happening. Uh, we, we were talking on a, on another podcast the other day, for example, somebody was having a trouble. Uh, they were saying that their, their, their interface was working fine and then it wasn't. Mm. And we hate that. And I'm think, yeah. And it's like, well, I wonder what, what would have changed because generally solid state stuff just doesn't break. Yeah. You know, as I was trying to explain to my mother-in-law, you know, the, your, your, your brand new Samsung TV does not break unless you hit it with a sledgehammer. So, but it's not, I can't get CNN, but anyway, uh, it's, it turned out to be, it was probably a wall wart, you know, the transformer went, went bad. And mm -hmm. so you got to replace, those are the types of things that we deal with. And right. it's like, Oh yeah, that's what it is. And it's, I, by the way, th there's nothing more fun than doing all this. That's why we, anyway, it is fun. Uh, yeah. So if you want to work with one of us, you know, whether you've, whether you've got a technical issue or you have no idea what you're doing, uh, like, you know, where's the record button? How do Which I use my mic? Do you talk into? <laughs> yeah, we don't, you, you don't want to talk into the wrong side of the mic. You want to talk into the right side of the mic. Those are, those are the, and usually that's like either you're talking in the wrong side of the mic or someone has set their, their mic on their laptop as the input. Why do I sound so far away? Because you are. Um, anyway, if you'd like to work with one of us and help you solve your problems and teach you how to do all this right, all you got to do is, let me see, I got to find where all this stuff is now. All them lower thirds or whatever. Yeah, the, where, are where, where are the lower thirds? In the, the banner thir area? Oh, they're in banners. That's right. So if, if you want to work with George, you go on over to... Hey, there it is, George the dot tech. That is uh, our home on the web for tech support. We've got a whole team of folks over there now available to 
help you, you can get on-demand or emergency support through our tech support hotline at 424-226-8528. And, um, or you can just start real basic. Um, in fact, what we did recently, we added a new thing called um, our first timer service. And what it is, it's a place where you can come in and let us know exactly what you need. <laughs> so if we might have Rich Green take over the support for you, if it's a really simple newbie issue, and if it's something more advanced, Rich will then help you get in connected with somebody else on our team, including me, for a higher level, more technical issues. So we have an onboarding process if you just don't know where to start. Um, cool. But that's something that uh, we do here. But over at Dan's place, the home voiceoverstudio.com, he's doing some of his own brand of tech support. Yeah, it's uh, and, and, and it's usually weird stuff. Like, why is this <laughs> happening? Um, yeah. and, that's and, been the real brand of the day lately is why is this, this happening? Then <laughs> there's been a lot more of it lately, whether it's retrograde yeah. mercury or it's the Russians or who knows, or it was that <laughs> Chinese balloon that was throwing everything too out. many Chinese balloons. That's right. Um, and, uh, so go on over to homevoiceoverstudio.com. All of a sudden my specimen collection cup has become very full, uh, with lots of people <laughs> saying, does it ever spill? I, I, no, I've, it never spills over. Thank God. But uh, uh, I got to catch. I have a lot to catch up on because people are piling those things in there. I'll give you a very thorough analysis of your audio and tell you what it's supposed to sound like and what you probably need to do to fix it. Unless it sounds really good, in which case I'll say, hey, it sounds pretty good. Anyway, so that's our plug of Palooza for this week. It's time for George and his tech update, and you've got a couple of interviews. I do, I do. I um, well, the first one is a little interview from GIK Acoustics from the NAM show, which was a couple of weeks ago. I did a bunch of dinner, different product vendor interviews, but you know, we love to talk acoustics on the show. And GIK Glenn Kirk, uh, Glenn uh, Kirk, last name is totally out the back of my head. Glenn K, um, who was there. Um, he is, I'd say an innovator and a, and a create creates really good, attractive, well-performing products. So here's a little profile from Nam show of the products at Glenn G I K acoustics. I got someone here from G I K right now. is going to give us a little information about the product line. How you doing, Nick? Hey, how you doing? I'm great. Thank you. Tell us about some of the panels that and products that would be really great for a voiceover booth. They tend to be really smaller spaces, you know? Yeah, so um, just come around here. Um, I'll show you. So for a vocal booth um, and voiceover rooms, um, if you go for like fully treating the space, we usually uh, use the 244 panel um, because that covers the entire range down to 80 hertz, which is perfect for, for the, it covers the entire vocal range really. You can equip your whole room with them and, and it'd be fine. If you're looking for something more portable, um, we have our PIP, our portable isolation booth. So that is a, a modular, uh, a modular panel, you can actually fold it together, bring it with you, throw it in a truck uh, if you're on the road. Um, you can combine multiple pips, create a, 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 an isolation booth, um, and then you can tear it down and, and store it in the closet if you're done. So um, a lot of voiceover artists also use that. Just Let's see what that sounds like in here. Whoa, it sucks away the room ambience big time. Yeah, it really sucks the ambience. Yeah, I mean, that really kills all the reverb uh, going around. So that's the approach. And if, you, if you're looking um, into upgrading them a little bit more, we always recommend bass traps, like corner modules. That's our soft fit. That's probably a little bit oversized, but we also do in the tri trap, the half, half size of those. Um, so they just go in the, in the corner, you can stack them, and then you can treat the, the, the low end between 70 and uh, 150 hertz if you have some resonance in the room. Um, you always have resonance in the room. Yeah, exactly. I mean, uh, 
women have less problems because the, the vocal range is higher. Yes, exactly. And, and the, but the, a, a male bo voice just goes down to 80. They ring down to 80 or even lower sometimes. Lower sometimes. So I don't have a deep voice and I can still get a room at 80 hertz to yeah, ring with my... trigger it and then it's, it's ringing and, and you get that in the recording. So you, you kind of want, want to have bass traps. However, the two for fours, as mentioned, they go for low, so you can get away with them as well. You know, something this big looks, it looks really giant for a small booth. But if you think about it, when you put it in the corner and you actually use it to hold a computer monitor and a user, it, you use it functionally, it doesn't take up as much space. You could have your copy stand and your audio interface sitting on this, and it's useful. It's not It's not taking up as much space as you think. Yeah, exactly. And also, if you like something more appealing, we, we have the turbo trap. Um, you can use it as a stand as well. It supports uh, up to 100 pounds. Um, and again, it's, it's, it's great bass trap. It utilizes our new DDM technology. Um, which basically extends the absorption down to 70 hertz effectively. So um, you can put it in corners, you can use it as a free stand inside your vocal booth and um, yeah, basically kill the, the room modes. Excellent. Well, it's always great to see what you guys have going on. Really, you guys have the ultimate in high quality panels and I, I really uh, appreciate your quality control and the creativity of your products, yeah, the awesome. best stuff. We, we get all our products measured at uh, Riverbank Labs or Southfield University in England. So we actually know how they perform inside the room, which is important because we also do free advice for our customers and we kind of need to know how they, the pounds perform inside the room. To That's really important. Proper advice and, and, uh, and arrive at the result we are, uh, that we're looking for. So. Thanks a lot. That, look for the science, guys. Don't buy things based on hearsay. Look at the science. Glenn, who is the creator, CEO, and designer, creates beautiful acoustical panels that are really based in acoustical science. Here's a diffusion. This is a panel that uses something called binary diffusion. And this is a, a, a calculated but random pattern. And you could use this as a way to make a small room have a little bit more life to it if you're afraid of it being too dead sounding. Uh, he said that uh, somebody has been using these in a vocal booth and it'd be interesting to try it out. But uh, yeah, I mean, they do beautiful art panels too. Their, their art printing is second to none. In fact, these are the panels that I had put in uh, for JMC, J. Michael Collins, because the printing process is so fine and it doesn't clog the screen so the sound still goes passes through, it doesn't reflect off. So that, that's great. Thanks a lot, Nick. I, I'm not sure. There were a lot of things at the NAM show and it was overwhelming, but the noise floor Yikes. was really overwhelming. <laughs> Hearing it now and out of context or when I'm playing it back, it's kind of shocking how loud it was in that place. That's why you <laughs> monitor while you're recording. <laughs> I was. I was, but you know, you're in this loud room, so your, your room tone of the entire environment is so loud, you don't even realize. Um, oh, that, that big round bass trap thing he showed up, it's like a pedestal. That does seem overkill, but then I thought about it. Like you put that in a corner of a booth, and it's going to suck up a lot of that ringingness, and you're going to have a place to put your monitor or your computer. And actually, <laughs> or a bottle of water. Yeah, it's really not that bad of an idea when you think about it. You know. Interesting. Um, another thing I was guys going to going to show you is um, I do have an interview. It's kind of long. I don't want to get into too much length of it, but what I thought I might do is show you a teaser. And what it is, it's an interview where I got to talk to the owners of a studio in Seattle called Bad Animals. And uh, it has an interesting history. So I'll play a little bit, maybe about five minutes of that interview, um, just to give you a teaser. If you want to see the rest, it's I just uploaded it. It's up at George the Dot Tech um, YouTube channel, and you can watch the 25-minute version of this interview. But Here's a little chat with the owners of Bad Animals, and it's a studio where we designed a uh, really, really nice, big, 11-foot ceilinged voiceover booth. So here's a little bit from that. It's George the Tech, and I'm getting to interview a special client today because not every day I get to work with commercial studios, especially studios with such a history as this one. And I've got a big team here today from Bad Animals in Seattle. 
to tell us about the process and really more about their studio. Would each of you go around the room and tell me a little bit about who you are on the team? And uh, we'll start there, starting on the sofa. Hi, I'm Wendy. I am the production manager here at Bad Animals. I manage clients, projects, workflow, and I'm the only one that's not an engineer, so I do everything that they do not. <laughs> Very valuable. Everybody knows that. We'll edit auditions and stuff. Oh, that's good. They make you do that too, eh? Yeah. <laughs> I don't know what clockwise is because I don't know if the camera's reversed, but I'll go back to Mike because I know Mike's name off the top of my head. Mike. Owner, bad animals, sound designer, primarily bad animals, and what else do I say? You're an owner who gets your hands dirty. You're actually in production and doing stuff. Yeah, I mean, we're owner-operated. Tom, yep. also owner there, too. And I've been here 31 years. You have many stories. In another time, in another place, we're going to get into those stories on another show, too. Moving on, Tom. Tom McGurk, I'm also owner. I'm a composer and sound designer and engineer as well. And I've been here 32 years that one year he's gonna hold it over your head for the yeah, forever <laughs> Winner. <laughs> and lastly and last but not least in the front yeah my name is paul miller and i've been here full time for exactly one year now and Happy uh, I freelance, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and i i freelanced here for a long time before that but yeah now my home is now here at bad animals and I'm a sound designer, audio engineer, and re-recording mixer. Yeah. Cat lover. Yep, yeah, and I like cats. <laughs> <laughs> no, <I'm... laughs> I would love to share with our viewers a little bit of a slice of history of bad animals. And so would one of you gentlemen, Tom or Mike, tag team, and give us a little bit of a background of the bad animals studio. Uh, both Mike and I started at a place called Lost of Productions, which in the 70s was called K. Smith Studios, owned by Lester Smith, who was the guy that owned a lot of radio stations up and down the West Coast, and Danny Kay, the famous actor. In the 70s, there were a lot of really famous bands that came through, like Barracuda was done there, Steve Miller's Fly Like an Eagle, Stevie Wonder, on and on. And then that studio was purchased by Steve Lawson Heart. Productions. <laughs> and then he called it Lawson Productions until he partnered with Ann and Nancy Wilson. They changed the name to Bad Animals. And they built a very large recording studio at the old facility we were at on 4th Avenue, which is now going to be a 32-story office tower yeah, like that. currently being built. So that went on in 1999 after Mike and I worked on Bill Nye the Science Guy together all the way through the run. <clears throat> and after that, in 1999, we partnered with Dave Howe, who is a mix engineer who came from Universal in Florida, and Charlie Nordstrom. And we all bought the studio and kept it going as Bad Animals, but the post-production side. So it split off into Studio X, which was the big music room. And then we had six studios there that were post-production studios. And we just kept going until they sold the building in 2017. And then Mike actually found this place, which is Victory Studios, up here in Seattle. And it's an awesome place to be. And we had to get in here as fast as possible. So the room that we're in now was half as big because the voice booth was actually in this room. But we just found out the room that we're in was purpose-built in the 90s to be an incredibly nice mix room. And it actually has turned out, once we pulled the voice booth out, this room is a really beautiful sounding room. So Very long interview. We were just getting started. But if you want to see the rest, it's on my YouTube channel, George the Tech. And we get into sort of the studio, how it's set up, what we went into the design of their new booth, etc. So if that, if that kind of thing interests you, go, go please take it a check, take a look. Um, last quickie thing is I was going to mention this stuff from Waves and Waves plugins. Um, they went through a little bit of a tough go the last couple of months because they, they as a company, thought that everybody was going to be happy with going full subscription for all of their plugins. And they got a bit of a blowback for that. <laughs> and they pivoted, decided not to make everybody sign on to a subscription plan and allow people to buy each and every one of their plugins. At 29 bucks. But I'm not here to sell you plugins. I'm here to tell you about a free one. 
this is a completely free plugin from Waves called Studio Rack. And it took me a while to wrap my head around why this is good or why it's useful or what the heck you would do with it. What we're one of the things we're going to talk about tonight, and we'll get back to what George was talking about. Um, in my basic basics is what I'm now calling this segment. Uh, I get a lot of calls from and, and emails from people saying, you know, telling me what it is that they're they're doing and what equipment they're using. And one of the things that keeps coming up, which boggles my mind, and I really want to find the answer to this question. Because, and there's going to, uh, some of you are going to, well, I use that. I know what it's about. People are using Reaper. Now, everybody's going, it's the greatest thing ever. I don't know. Maybe I'm just really, really old school. Uh, Reaper is one of those things that it's a multi track program. If you were watching last week and we were talking with Robert Marshall, all of this stuff is made for recording music. And it, you don't need all of this complicated stuff. For example, I mean, just all you have to do is take a look at the, the, the interface with, with Reaper. And let's see, it's right here. And we just go into there and then we share the screen and there we have Reaper. Now, what is it with Reaper? Uh, first off, how do you make it work? And what does it all, what does it all do? Guess what? And ever some of you out there are gonna go, oh, ah, yeah, I've, uh, you're you're just trying to get, you know, you know, trying to complain about something. Yeah, I am complaining about something. The fact of the matter is, is Reaper has so much more than what you would ever possibly need for doing voiceover. Yet, I keep hearing. Well, somebody said I should use that. Well, first off, somebody probably already knows how to use it and may have been using it for years. It's just not an easy interface to use. Um, I mean, we were, George and I were talking about this before. I'm like, how do you arm the, the uh, how do you arm the whole thing? Well, you, you arm it from there and then you hit record and then it's supposed to start recording and it doesn't even do that. It, basically, I look at Reaper as like a box of Legos. I was using this analogy earlier with Dan. It's like a box of Legos. Yep. On the front of the box is a picture of a little house, right? Mm -hmm. But what you want is a car. So as long as your idea with Reaper is to do one specific thing, which is multi-track record live or a recording, it's set to do that right out of the box. But if you wanted to do voiceover production, you have to completely rebuild the Lego kit to right. turn it into something that's useful for voiceover production or at least efficient. You know, I can figure out any software out there and I can roll through this. I think that that StreamYard is probably interfering a little bit at what uh, trying to make this work. Well, Chrome, Chrome gave me a, gave, gave me a hard time. I had to quit Chrome just to get back my audio working on the show. Oh, okay. Again, so. Right. But you know, <laughs> but th this is why I'm bringing this up because all you guys are like, well, I've got to use this because that's what people say I should use. Fact of the matter is, is you really don't need to, uh, to do any of that. Because there are much simpler programs. If you're th if you're thinking that you know that uh, Reaper knows, stop recording first. It wasn't recording in the first place for crying out loud. That's, <laughs> okay, please stop recording. I did stop recording. See, this is this is why it's stupid. It's it just doesn't doesn't want to do what it's supposed to do. Oh God. Anyway. Here's something a lot simpler. And you guys, you should not overthink all this stuff. For example, here's something that, you know, you just jump in. It's called Twisted Wave. And instead of arming the track and setting a new track and doing all that stuff, you open the program and you hit record and you start recording. I mean, come on. You know, it's like, okay, well, you know, in Reaper, you've got all this stuff. It's like, you know, I can take make custom this, buttons that that's right. You can do and, and customize everything with this. You can record. You don't like that. You delete it. You want this over here, you know, command C and you put it in here. And I mean, come on, it's, it, it's not rocket science. It literally isn't rocket science. Yeah. Uh, I mean, Twisted Wave is like a word processor for audio almost. It's right. really straightforward. The Super other ones duper. are. Hopelessly so it, frustrating. Yeah, it really comes down to 
what is you know, everybody's like, well, what's the, what's this software? What's this DAW? What's this thing? What's that thing? Forget about all that stuff. Yeah, you can try it. You can learn it. The thing is, you know, my, my son is always asking me, he says, how do I do this? And I'm like, well, take about 20 years and practice and do it because you're not going to learn this stuff overnight. You have to understand after a while you get the feel and the understanding of what it is that this software does and how it does it. And you don't need all of this other stuff. That's why I'm always constantly harping on the idea that the most important thing when you were home, your home voiceover studio is the acoustics of the room you're in. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, I mean, you know, we, I, yeah, it's we a bit love, of a rant, but you we know. love gadgets. We love software. It's, it's fun to play with this stuff, but if it ever gets in the way of your finishing a job anyway, yeah, we, we want to keep tools simple when they're used in live production environments. If you're doing recordings on your own, let's say you have this big e-learning project and you have three months to do it. You got all the time in the world to, to learn, experiment, try to find automated ways to do certain things and save time. The rest of the voiceover world is more high paced. It requires a deadline. It requires efficiency and reliability. And we want tools that don't get in your way, guys. That's what we care about. So, yeah, we just finished a teaching module on Reaper. We had Stephen Cunning, uh, Stephen uh, Gonzalez come on, and he really does know his stuff. Even I had my eyes rolling to the back of my head watching <laughs> how to set up Reaper for voiceover. So, why use it in the first place when you can just, you know? Just it just hit record and do your job anyway. Yeah. All right. We got lots of great questions from our vast audience. So we'll get to those in just a couple of minutes. So stay tuned. We'll be right back after these important messages. This is Bill Ratner and you're enjoying voice over body shop with Dan Leonard and George Whittem. V O B S dot TV. Vacation time is just around the corner around the world. For example, Here's Australian voiceover pro Andrew Peters on vacation in London recording a commercial with his Portabooth Pro. Why is the Portabooth Pro gaining users worldwide? Well, just listen. Winter's tough. The rain. The wind. The cold. Performers can capture great audio even in acoustically untreated spaces with the Portabooth Pro. Your microphone hears the sound of a human-sized sound booth at a fraction of the size and cost. The Pro accommodates large and long microphones, lengthy scripts, and e-reading devices. The Harlan Hogan Portabooth Pro is lined with Auralex Studio Foam. It's a professional quality sound studio that assembles in less than a minute. And its multi-pocketed carrying case makes it super easy to take your gear and your voice wherever you go. Order your Harlan Hogan Portabooth Pro now. Just $389.99. Only at voiceoveressentials.com. Well, it's that time of the show where we talk about Source Elements and their flagship software, Source Connect, which is a tool that every voice actor who's really kind of taking their game up to that next level uh, should have in their toolbox. Now, here's the thing. I've been hearing people say, well, well, do I need a subscription? Should I buy it outright? I don't like subscriptions. Um, okay, there's a couple ways to use it and a couple ways to own it. So some folks do like the buyout thing. And what that means is you buy, buy it up front and you own that license for life. It does mean that over time, the license loses value essentially in that when there's new versions coming out a year or two or four later, you will have to pay an upgrade fee. But the good news is that you own it for life and you don't necessarily have to upgrade it until a totally new version comes out, probably sometime by the end of this year. But let's say you just want to test it out. You can do that. You can get a demo. Source-elements.com. Get a demo. Start playing around with it. Learn its ins and outs. You can even actually get certified. And what that means is you get tested and run through some training by the team at Source Elements to make sure that you really understand not only how Source Connect works, but how your own studio works. Really actually a pretty good idea, right? You're not just saying, I'm certified. You're saying, I really do understand my gear and, and what works and what how it works and how it's all interconnected or and even how to deal with a troubleshooting issue on the fly. And that's the kind of thing that a certification can help you with. But let's say you've got the demo, but you're not going to pay for it because you're not getting those clients. You can even activate a two-day license just to get Source Connect for brief periods of time. 
So lots of ways to pay and use Source Connect. Head over to source-elements.com and get started. And we'll be right back to answer tech questions right after this. Hey there, it's David H. Lawrence, the 17th. What's it like for you when you check your email and there is a voiceover audition waiting for you to dive in and you go, great, this is awesome. And then that fear starts to creep in. Am I good enough? Do I know what I'm doing? Am I going to give them what they want? Listen, I've been there. And so has my friend Michael Kostroff, who is now one of my voiceover clients. Very excited about that. He's applied his Audition Psych 101 process and method to voiceover. And it's awesome. He's got three free uh, lessons right now that are available at auditionpsych101.com slash join. That's auditionpsych101.com slash join. Go watch these right now. By the time you watch this, maybe they're all out. Who knows? But it's worth every moment to help you get your mind right on the psychology of auditioning. Auditionpsych101.com slash join. Yeah. Hi, this is Carlos Alas Rocky, the voice of Rocco, and you're watching Voice Over Body Shop. All right. We're back with a bunch of questions. You still have time to throw your questions in here if you happen to have a question for, for us about your home voiceover studio. The first one was mailed in, so therefore it goes first in the queue. That's right. From Patrick Lagreed. He says, I want to ask you about headphones. Okay, we'll talk about headphones. I recently made the switch from a pair of fairly high-end Sony headphones, he says they're MDR 7520s, Ooh. that I think have been discontinued. And I don't know the model of a pair of, of the pair of Bearer Dynamic DT770 Pro 80 ohms, which I saw George recommends in the gear section of his website. Love the sound of the Sonys. But the plastic body made noise when I would talk, and it would often get picked up during live sessions. When I switched to the, the, the Bear Dynamics, I noticed that the sound they offered lacked the bass and richness of the Sonys, which in turn didn't make my voice sound as rich, full, and deep as I was used to. But the Sonys also seemed to reveal things. I, I, I didn't want in my auditions and takes, such as plosive, clicks, and so on. You couldn't hear them in the other ones. Can you talk about what headphones should offer, which offer the wrong things, and what those wrong things are. Thank you very much. Well, thank Yikes. you for that question, Patrick. <laughs> no, but it's a great question because it's like, well, what headphones are going to be really, really good for and make me sound the way I like sounding? As opposed I had to, to look what... these up, right? I yeah. I had never heard of them before. Um, and it's not like they're a really old model. I don't think they don't look old. No, but uh, they they discontinued them. Maybe because they were five hundred dollars, they weren't selling very well. Not really sure. Um, but it's, it stinks when you have a pair of headphones that you like the sound of, but they don't do everything really well. So what do you like to use in your studio for your headphones? What do you find comfortable and have good fidelity? I, I have my Harlan Hogan signature series headphones. They are, they have a very flat response and that's, I'm wearing them right now too. And I'm, I'm moving my head around to I'm, see if they make any weird noises or and they don't. And they're incredibly comfortable. They're, they're made clunking. of metal, not plastic, which is you right. know, something that Harlan was really uh, thought was really important when he designed them. Uh, but you, you like the bear dynamics. I know. Well, uh, I got them both and <laughs> so I got my bear bar dynamics on now. And um, they're quite different from each other. They feel different on my head. They sound different to my ears. They have a different character. I find these humongous ear cups, these big, soft, pillowy ear cups, to be really comfortable. So I like that feel. I can eventually get used to the sound of different headphones. These Harlan Hogan's sound different than the DT770s. These sound different from the Sonys. Those sound different from the Audio Technicas, right? They all have a different sound. What it comes down to is get something that you can wear for long periods of time that don't irritate you, and you will eventually learn the sound of the headphones. It will take you time, but you will learn them. Um, Moose, who's been on, who's get asked questions on our show, I saw him post on Facebook recently. He said, I have Sony headphones. They're this and that. I tried these other ones. I tried the Austin Audio X60s or something like that. I didn't like them. I said, just, you got to get used to them. Bottom line is you need to be able to wear them for hours on end and have them be comfortable enough to wear. 
but you will get used to those different headphones. So you have to just find something you like wearing because that's something you can't really change. If, if they're not comfortable, you're always going to hate them. I mean, I've yep. got headphones over here. These are one of the best <laughs> sounding headphones made in the history of headphones. And they're horribly uncomfortable. I would never wear these. Right. <laughs> you know, like, I don't care how good they sound. They're uncomfortable. So I would say pick things that are comfortable first. And you can, you can kind of become accustomed to it. The, the, these versus the, the, the uh, Harlan Hogan's. The Har Harlan Hogan's are a bit mid-range forward. They have a little bit more mid-range forward sound, which when I'm talking on mic and wearing headphones is pleasing sounding. It's but that doesn't not. really matter for production. It only matters that the end results sound good, you know? So, Right. And the, and the thing is, is those of you who are wearing headphones while you're recording, unless you're listening to a director or something, don't wear them because that sucks you into the sound of your own voice. It's the distracting. Only, yeah. Yeah. I'm, yeah. The only reason that, you know, we wear headphones on here is because we can't get the mix minus to work and on stream yard we, we need, have to, we need to have yeah other. no echo and we do need we're live right so we need right. to confirm that the audio is functioning all the time so we have to live monitor and, that's and, right and tonight it's you know rather challenging uh yeah. although it seems to sound okay at the moment so at we'll, the moment i'm, I'm, I'm going to make sure i don't touch anything with my feet right because apparently but, i bumped a cable into the desk oh, and that's oh where it's, it's your wrong. fault okay i think so. that's what it was <laughs> But yeah, no, I, you know, I like these because they're very flat sounding, um, but I hardly use them. The only time I use them is when we're doing this show right? or if I'm doing a session, a live session, you know, mm -hmm. I was doing a live session with five guys in Turkey this week. Wow. Wow. Yeah. And, and, and I have lots of great stories about doing sessions in other countries, mm -hmm. uh, Norway, you know, now <laughs> Turkey. I mean, they gave me a lot of work too, which was great. Awesome. Um, yeah, I'm now, I'm now on the, all these Ford truck commercials in Turkey. Go figure. But I, I needed to be able to hear them and, uh, direct and it worked great. Uh, but for the most part, I, I just recorded my norm, my natural environment. I'm hardly using the studio anymore. I'm about here on my desk and that's the stuff that's going on the network stuff. So, right. you know, then again, this. This, this when do you moment. go into the booth versus sitting at your desk? What is there certain things where like, I think I should go in my booth for this. It's that little voice in the back of my head that says, okay, I got to go use the 416. I got to go be in the booth. Although the more I'm doing it out here, the more I'm thinking, you know, that would make a great closet. So. <laughs> it's, yeah. But, you know, but I, you know, when other people come in here, you know, if we're recording some character work for, for Jacob's animation, or we're doing a project, uh, for, for somebody, yep. uh, somebody comes in to record a podcast. Absolutely. They go in the booth so I can operate things. But, That's uh, right. Yeah. But you don't need to be wearing headphones all the time, unless of course you don't want to disturb everybody. And for editing, you really do need to have a good pair of headphones, but not something that overemphasizes the bass. And makes your voice sound rich because guess what? Your voice sounds like your voice. And no matter what you do with the headphones, it's not going to sound that way on the other end for who's ever getting your audio. Yeah, there is no pair of headphones that gives you an honest or perfect representation of the audio. Every pair of headphones, whether designed to be flat or not, have a sound. They all do. So whatever it is, you just have to become really familiar with them. That's why... I've been using the same two pairs. Well, I retired one pair, but I've been using the same biodynamic headphones. They have new versions of them. They have upgraded versions of them. There's the Pro 770X. There's the 1770s. There, but no, they, they will all sound a little bit different. I don't want to learn new headphones, and I like the way they feel. So that's my... Headphones are so personal, even more than yep. microphones. Yep. Mm -hmm. yep. To me, headphones are what you listen to Pink Floyd far as i'm concerned <laughs> uh but that's just me <laughs> because i i generally don't worry about you know i have good studio monitors and once you have a good set studio set up studio monitors are a really good thing to have if mm -hmm. you don't it, that is if you don't have to bother mm -hmm. anyway next question from oh look at this from epic voice guy you want to take this one sure um, he says, is there, is there any good option for a lightning adapter compatible 
lavalier mic for iPhone or iPad that works with existing apps like Instagram, TikTok, or the built-in camera. <sighs> Rode makes I, that, that, that thing that you clip on. Well, they have the Rode Video Mic Go. Right. Was that what it's called? Or no, they have the Rode Mic Go, which is a little transmitter kit that you can put one on your phone and one on your body. Right. Um, those are okay. The ones that I, but he's what he needs is he's doing live streaming. So he's rec or he's recording into these apps. So he's recording into Instagram or TikTok. I'm assuming here with the or the built-in camera. And so he needs that signal to go live into the phone. And what my experience with doing live audio into an iPhone, into an app over lightning has been very unreliable, like really bad. <laughs> I mean, it's, we, we, we were at via, we were at Vio Atlanta, right? I had the portcaster with me. Um, I had it plugged in with a lightning cable. No, no, that's not true. I had it with me. I was using the Rode video mic go to with a lightning adapter into my iPhone. And I had the Rode representative showing me how to do it and we tested it and we he's like here's what you do you load the video mic app or the road app you make sure the road app gets the right signal from the right source because the video apps don't have an input selector for audio you don't know what the hell it's going to use is it going to use the mic in the phone or is it going to use the mic in your device you don't know so you go through this process long story short dan i did how many packages did i record and say, hey, Dan, here's all these videos. Use them on the show. Like, did any the of them sound? have audio? No, they did not. Not a one. Not a one. So my takeaway is, and I, I, I don't want to rant tonight, and we've already ranted tonight. <laughs> we've, it's been a rant fest. Apple, I effing hate you with a passion of a thousand burning suns because you will not give the users a selection, input selection, for choosing your audio device in ios you just refuse we're on version 16.4 if you haven't done it by now you're probably never going to do it and i hate you for it <laughs> the mac well, not OS, much of a rant there I, the mac really os <laughs> you can select the effing mic no question you can choose what input you're using you're good right iphone no but it's, they, they, it's a crapshoot yeah, I mean they do make some some mics for it. I mean we've got the 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 Go and the uh, there's and then sure makes the MV88. I'm telling which, you, I used the Video Mic Go Pro Go Two yeah. for iPhone right. and had no audio on six videos. That's hmm. what I'm telling you. That's <laughs> why you monitor it as you record. I was. <laughs> I monitored the whole thing, but the files I gave you did they have audio on them? Not a bit. No. Okay, so that's my point. Okay. So what's the solution? Um, it's hard to know because of, of the reliability issue. Um, I would use an Apple headset adapter. They're like $10. You know, it's the little thing that goes from lightning to a headset jack, right? It's the thing they, they it was the, it was the stopgap after they removed the headphone jack from the phone, right? I would use that. And then I would use, um, I would use, honestly, if you're really serious about this thing, and I know you are, because I know you, I would use something like this. <laughs> because not only can you feed the audio into your phone on via USB lightning, you can also feed it in through the TRS cable, TRRS cable, and it has its own recorder in it. So you yep. have redundancy here. You can record a backup. Dan and I did interviews at uh, VO North using this thing. It was and we great. had several with no audio and we had the recording in this thing as a backup so we were able to sync it up later saved our butt saved us a lot of wasted frustration and time right um and having that backup recorder is crucial i think the dji mics as well dji mic are killer because they also have internal built-in recording so yeah again same if you have connectivity issues you're doing an interview. You can't monitor the audio going into Instagram. You have no idea if the audio is working or not or something else, or you're doing a, a, a record video record. You can put the audio back in later because the recording is internally stored in the mic and it does it automatically. The second you pull the mic 
out of this little charging case, it starts recording. It's really hard to screw it up. It's what I it's what I had uh, Allison Packard get for for her show for Alice yeah. in Wonderland is those DJI mics. So yeah, that's I would recommend backup recording mics like that. It just will save you a lot of hassle. A uh, great question from Grace Newton. Since we were talking about software, she's I've been hearing about again. I've been hearing about mm -hmm. uh, a digital audio workstation called Descript. How long has it been around, and what are the key features? I love Twisted Wave. How does Descript differ from that? If you like Twisted Wave, why bother? But do you know anything about Descript? I haven't heard a whole lot. Of it. I've been using it extensively. Okay, do tell. <laughs> um, so what Descript does is they're trying to strip away the audio engineering side of recording audio and leave as much of that to the to ai and other tools like you know automated tools as possible so what does that mean you still have to have a decent mic you still got to put it in the right place you still have to do all the right things coming into your computer but once the audio is captured into script it has some automation features that can save you time one of them is automatic transcription and that really is the descript business model like if you run it in basic mode or free mode and don't use the transcription you're good you can use tran you can use descript as much as you want for free absolutely for free but they won't give you transcription okay well let's say you don't need transcription that's fine but that is the whole point of descript is the transcription because once it's transcribed all your audio into a script now you can edit the audio by editing the script so now it feels like editing in a word processor so you can go through go well you know what this whole part we were just getting ready to start the show highlight delete and it edits it you this part was where i stumbled and i said it again i can highlight the the first take not not the waveform but the text delete it and it makes the edit the edits are perfectly cross faded they don't have a click or a pop and it makes a pretty good edit now it has another feature that is a dangerous one and i do not recommend <laughs> using it for pro use and that is the automatic filler word detection and removal function. The it interview that's scary I, on its own. Well, I just used it on the interview that I was showing earlier where I, when I recorded the interview with Bad Animals. The first thing I did when I brought the file in was I said, detect all of the filler words. Filler words are um, uh, uh things like um. this, right? And then instead of just detecting them, I said, just get rid of them, right? So it went through and found every instance of uh or um, and just did jump cuts. It basically cuts the word out, right? It worked good on about 80% of it. The last 20%, it made a mess out of it. it. It just needed a lot more editing to clean it up, right? So it's, it's clever. It can end up making you think you're saving time, but you end up having to go back and fix the things that it tried to automate. So it's not perfect for everything. But it does have cool features like you can make an audiogram. I did a little video on Centrance, on the Centrance Passport recently. It was an audio recording from Clubhouse. And then we had a little waveform bouncing around on the bottom of the screen. That's called an audiogram. It, the software does that for you automatically. It also will put captions in your videos. So you can have nice captions of different sizes and formats. So if you do a lot of content for social media, Descript, I think, is really useful. Would it be good for pro voiceover as a substitute for Twisted Wave? I don't know. I think you would have to use it for a while and make the decision for yourself. Get a, get a demo of it and play around with it for a while and, and see how it saves you time. You may find it frustrating. So, mm, my two right. cents. All righty. Uh, Dan Alpern asks, plugging a radio transceiver via the 3.5 jack that works with my iPhone hand, headset into the RCP-1 via TRRS. Why would it give me a squealing sound on the RCP, but not on the headphones, when both use TRRS? There's a lot of code in there. Oof, a radio <laughs> transceiver via 3.5 that uses, that works with my iPhone headset. If it's a squeal, it's probably a feedback of some sort. Yeah, well, hmm, that's a good question, Dan. I don't know. Why? Yeah, some two things that are both TRRS. 
I know there is more than one way of making a TRRS cable. Um, but you're saying that if it works a little bit, yeah, yeah, if it works with the iPhone, it should work with the roadcaster too. Cause they're wired the same way. Right. Um, man, that's, that's a question for, that's probably a question for road. Although if they don't know what your transceiver device is, which you interestingly left out that detail, yeah, we, we really. don't know what the product actually is or the model number. Yeah. Um, but you know, that might be helpful for them to help you troubleshoot it. I will say that Rode has really good support. Um, you know, it's worth it's worth checking with them and seeing what they have to say. But I don't know why it gets squealing. Um, mm. That yeah, that one that sounds like feedback that's happening somewhere yeah. in the setup, and it might be happening internally in the transceiver. Right, or you're too um, close to the mic wearing headphones, and or it's Mercury that. retrograde, and or yeah. it's it's that thing. Uh, Question from Jeff Holman. Here's a really good voiceover question. I know all rooms are different, but if I have a 4x8 ATS panel on a 10x15 wall, is that enough for one wall, or will I likely need more panels elsewhere on the wall? And should I get 2-inch thickness or 4-inch thickness? One panel, a 4x8 panel on that's a 10x15. Massive. That's a that's a big panel, but 10x15 wall is also a big wall. It is a but, big wall. Yeah, I mean, we've we've learned that you know, covering every surface sometimes is not the best idea. You've got to have a little bit of liveliness. Acoustics it, is very holistic, right? It's yeah. It's not all about one wall and one surface. It's how the whole room interacts with each other. Right. What else is in that room? What furniture? What you know? How you're using your mic? How far away the mic is? But if you cover seventy five, sixty to seventy percent of that wall, you're. It's a good start. That's a good start. A 10 by 15 foot wall, so that must mean you have a 10 foot ceiling. That's a, that's a really, really high ceiling. Um, yeah. So yeah, you, you probably are going to have to treat a large portion of that wall to get rid of all of the reflection. Yeah. Um, maybe a cloud would help too if you've got a high ceiling. Maybe, yeah. Like a, a, It's hard to say without seeing the whole room, how it's laid out, the, si the size of the actual room itself. Um, in terms of two to four inches panel... You probably don't need four inch thick because that really is for really much more important for a small room where you really need to deal with the lower frequency buildup in a really small room. So a room that large, probably you won't notice any direct benefit going to four inch over two inch. That's my best guess. But again, I don't, I don't have the whole room designed to work with. Devil's in so, the in the details. There. Yeah, I would need to lay out the whole room and and know the size of it and. That's why we do this for a living. We have a whole service around designing acoustics for rooms, and we can help you with that, Jeff. That's a service I can provide to you. Yep. And speaking of acoustics, the last question we have this week, uh, I have a, it's from Jay, who's watching on YouTube. Uh, I have a Studio Bricks One Plus VO edition coming in about a week. George, Ooh. you have a YouTube video putting one together. <laughs> I remember that video. Any tips or learnings from that? Also, there there was never a follow up to George's video from putting a studio bricks together. I'd love to hear if they ended up needing more acoustic treatment. You know, well, it's yeah, I, first aside from the honor guard you need to carry the door because uh, mm -hmm. it's got a massively heavy door. Two strong folk, yeah, or four if you can find them in a <laughs> keg of beer. Um, you know, it's like it's got a once you get started on it, it's not that hard. Yeah, um, the acoustics of the new models, which has the new panel that I've showed you guys on the show a bunch of times. It's the gray grid work. Uh, different. Well, it looks like this. Yeah, that's their, their. If you're getting one of the models that has this inside, which all the new ones do now, this is an incredibly good acoustic absorber. Like It does an amazingly good job of sucking up sound. And then the, the VO edition is going to have a huge bass trap made out of the same stuff installed above, above your head, like up on the wall. And that does a really, really good job of sucking more of the room um, out and getting rid of more of the low end. So, yeah, the long and the short of it is the, 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 the acoustics of the newer Studio Bricks models from this year are a, a real improvement over past models. All so right. I don't think you'll need to do much. All right. But you know how to find out. Yeah. Is get a sound check. <laughs> Gotta listen. <laughs> That's the thing. 
my thing is doing this, it's doing that. I'm like, we have to hear it. Descriptions of sound are, are not helpful. The actual sound usually will give us the answer. Here's my favorite question of the night. Okay. <laughs> uh, yeah, from our friend at 949 Designs. Dan, is there a, a warranty on studio suit? The mustache has faded. <laughs> well, as, as has my actual mustache, as it turns whiter and whiter <laughs> as we keep doing this show. <laughs> Uh, anyway, thing. yeah, it's, well, I don't know. It, did you, yeah, didn't some of them have mustaches? On they all had, I, I spray painted, I had the logo on it and everything. That's right. That's right. It's been 10 years. You know what you could do, Lee, stuff. is you could, you could bring Dan out and a catalyst can of spray paint <laughs> Just and he could redo can. the mustache for you. Right. And they'll do it in different colors and stuff. <laughs> anyway, thanks for all your questions. I uh, love hearing from everybody. And yes, uh, we do. Great questions tonight. And of course, great answers. We'll be right back to wrap <laughs> things up right after this. So stay tuned. Yeah. Hi, this is Carlos Ellis Rocky, the voice of Rocco, and you're watching VoiceOver Body Shop. Your dynamic voiceover career requires extra resources to keep moving ahead. There's one place where you can explore everything the voiceover industry has to offer. That place is voiceoverextra.com. Whether you're just exploring a voiceover career or a seasoned veteran ready to reach that next professional level, stay in touch with market trends, coaching, products, and services while avoiding scams and other pitfalls. VoiceOver Extra has hundreds of articles, free resources, and training that will save you time and help you succeed. Learn from the most respected talents, coaches, and industry insiders when you join the online sessions, bringing you the most current information on topics like audiobooks, auditioning, home studio setup, and equipment, marketing, performance techniques, and much more. It's time to hit your one-stop daily resource for voiceover success. Sign up for a free subscription to newsletters and reports. It's all here at voiceoverextra.com. That's voiceoverxtra.com. All right. It's time to talk about something very important, and that is your website. That's right. Everybody needs a website. And so I'm trying to find, let's see here, where is it? Oh, there it is. I'm going to share it. There it is. It's called voiceactor.com. Now, this was arguably, it was my idea. Ten years ago, somebody said, hey, I want to do something for the voiceover business. I said, your home voiceover studio and your voiceover career and your website should not be a pain in the ass. So I said, why don't we come up with something that is templated, super duper simple? Well, our good friend Joe Davis over at voiceactor.com finally found the technology to do this. And now you can build your voiceover website in minutes. It's simple and fast. Do it yourself website builder for voice actors made by voice actors, designed by voice actors. And you can get started for free. It's the fastest way to have your voiceover website up and running now. George and I did this, and son of a gun, it took us, what, half an hour, and we got both our sites up, and super-duper easy. And it was free to start. They have lots of different thing, different uh, options that you can use uh, for adding more templates and things along those lines. But if you want to have a website, which you have to have as a voice actor, go over to Voice actor.com let me just zoom in on that so you can see it voiceactor.com that's where you can get your templated website and make it work for you and for everybody else to see we are the world voices organization also, also known, known as wovo we're the not-for-profit industry association of freelance voice talent voiceover is a complex entrepreneurial business wovo is there to promote the professional nature of voice work to the public to those already established in their voiceover practice and to those who want to pursue voiceover as a career membership benefits include a supportive and creative community a profile and demos on voiceover.biz our searchable directory of vetted professional voice talent 
our exclusive demo player for your personal website, our mentoring program, business resources, and our video library, our annual WovoCon conference, a fun and educational weekend with other members with, with the chance, chance to learn, learn and, and network. network, webinars and great speakers, and weekly social chats with other members around the world. If your world is voiceover, make Wovo part of it. World Voices Organization. We, we speak, speak for those who speak, speak for a living. living. All right. Well, we're back to say goodbye. Next week on the show, we've got Dave Walsh, great voiceover coach. Uh, knows his stuff. He's a, not only a successful voice actor, but he's come up with some really cool stuff for making your voice acting even better. And I know mm -hmm. from personal experience. And he's been on our show a few times, and he's always fun to have on. So we'll be looking forward to that. Uh, we need to thank our donors of the week, like Robert Leadham, Stephen Chandler, Casey Clack, Jonathan Grant, Thomas Pinto, Shelley Avellino, Greg Thomas, A Doctor Voice, Antland Productions, Martha Khan, 949 Designs with hey, the Lee. faded mustache, yes, uh, Christopher, Christopher Epperson, <laughs> Sarah Borges, <laughs> Philip Sapir, Brian Page, Patty Givens, Rob Ryder, Shauna Pennington Baird, Don Griffith, Trey Mosley, Diana Birdsall and, and Sandra and, Manweller. All right. Well, remember, if you need help with your home voiceover studio, one, watch VOBS. Every week. We're, we give you all the great stuff. But if you want to work with one of us, you can you can come over to my place, which is homevoiceoverstudio.com. I know it's there. Uh, or if you want to work with George, you go over to... Yay, George the dot tech, and don't forget that coupon code VOBS Fan Ten gets you ten percent off on everything on the new website. Let's see, where no, it's, that's it. Oh, here it is. It's that one. Hey, thank you. Oh, you're welcome. That's the one. All right. So anyway, so that's going to do it for us this week. Lots of great questions, lots of cool stuff. Always a pleasure to have you with us here at Voiceover Body Shop. Um, yes, indeed. But, you know, the thing is, though, we have examined so many studios and listened to so much audio, but we've come to the conclusion that if it sounds good, it is good. I'm Dan Leonard and I'm George Whittem. And this is voiceover body shop or V O B S tech talk, tech talk, tech talk. Have a great week, everybody. We have survived.